Now at 5 a.m. on WKYT this morning, two people charged in connection to a Lexington murder are going to be heading to court later this morning. Hillary Clinton has been advised by her doctors to take it easy for a few days. We're on the campaign trail coming up. And we could see crews back at Centerpoint in Lexington this week. Developer Dudley Webb tells us what we can expect to see next. That in your Monday morning forecast ahead on WKYT this morning. This is WKYT This Morning. Rise and shine and good Monday morning. Thank you so much for starting your day with WKYT. I'm Andrea Walker. Make the best of your Monday. That's right. <laughs> we hope you had a good weekend. You know, we had just beautiful weather. Oh, so it was there was spectacular. A lot going on, lots of festivals, and of course, uh, commemorative events yesterday for 9 mm 11. -hmm. I'm Bill Bryant, and we have all the latest news for you here in just a minute. Let's check in with meteorologist Micah Harris. The thermometer will start to rise again today. Huh? Yes, it will. Yeah, yesterday we finished off at 80 degrees here in Lexington. A lot of us finished off in the 70s, but we'll actually, most of us will actually be in the 80s today, and then we'll slowly rise as we go through time. It looks pretty good across the roadways. Not hearing of any issues. Temperatures are there in the 50s early this morning. It's actually a little chilly this morning as you walk out the door. 83 by the afternoon. A pretty great day in store. Now, I will tell you this. The focus of the forecast is how nice this weather will be the next few days. The rain chance in the forecast isn't really there throughout your work week. There are small chances here and there. I'm going to show you that in your seven day, but I'll also show you the best chance, which actually comes during the weekend again. I'll have that coming up in about 10 minutes. See you then. Thank you. Two people charged in connection to a shooting in Lexington will head to court this morning. Daniel Glasscock and Destiny Huff are both charged with murder and robbery. WKYT's Lauren Miner is live in Lexington now, looking ahead to their day in court. Lauren, good morning. Good morning, Bill and Andrea. Lexington police arrested 28 year old Daniel Glasscock on Saturday for murder and robbery. Now, this is the second arrest made in the shooting. On Friday, police arrested 22 year old Destiny Huff of Nicholasville. She has also been charged with murder and robbery in the first degree. Investigators determined that Huff and Glasscock were involved in an illegal drug action with the victim, Victor Villagomez Duarte, when the victim was shot Labor Day morning right outside the Microtel Inn on Buena Vista. Drive. He had a gunshot wound to his right shoulder and was then taken to the hospital for treatment. On Wednesday morning, he was pronounced dead. Police have not identified any other suspects at this time, but that's not to say that there aren't more. Both Huff and Glasscock will appear in court this morning. Reporting live in Lexington, Lauren Miner, WKYT. Lauren, thank you. And new this morning, we've learned that a soldier with Kentucky ties died overseas in Kuwait in a car crash. WDRB in Louisville reports that Jeffrey Cooper spent time at Fort Campbell in Kentucky. The Louisville station also says Cooper was killed in a rollover accident while traveling in Kuwait. WDRB reports that Cooper was awarded National Defense Service Medal, Global War on Terrorists Service Medal, and the Army Service Ribbon. The crash is still under investigation. A new issue is likely to take center stage in the final weeks of the 2016 presidential campaign. Hillary Clinton has been diagnosed with a serious illness. She's now being advised to take it easy for a few days. Hannah Daniels has the latest on campaign 2016. Hillary Clinton says she is feeling fine, but has canceled a two-day fundraising trip to California. Her doctor says the 68-year-old was diagnosed with pneumonia on Friday, although the illness was not publicly revealed until Clinton stumbled Sunday when leaving the 9-11 ceremony at Ground Zero. Clinton went to her daughter's Manhattan apartment for a few hours after the incident and then headed to her suburban home not far from New York City. Her doctor issued a statement saying, while at this morning's event she became overheated and dehydrated, I have just examined her and she is now rehydrated and recovering nicely. Donald Trump has not commented about Clinton's illness, but in the past the Republican nominee has repeatedly questioned whether his opponent has the strength to be president and the stamina to take on terrorists. He returns to the campaign trail after taking a day off to pay tribute to victims of the September 11th terror attacks. The latest CBS News battleground tracker poll shows the race is tightening in Florida. Clinton holds just a two-point lead there. In Ohio, another key battleground state, Clinton has a seven-point lead. Hannah Daniels, CBS News, New York. Trump is scheduled to speak in Baltimore and Asheville, North Carolina today. Clinton had fundraisers in San Francisco scheduled, but her campaign says they've canceled her trip.
A 9-11 tribute lit up New York for the 15th anniversary of the attacks. The tribute of lights consists of 88 beams forming the shape of the Twin Towers. Thousands attended a memorial service at Ground Zero where family members of victims read each name aloud. A memorial service was held at the Flight 93 National Memorial in Shanksville, Pennsylvania, and at the Pentagon as well. President Obama addressed the crowd there, urging Americans to stick together. ROTC students at Eastern Kentucky University also held a memorial service. Dozens listened to community leaders talk about the importance of remembering and of serving. One ROTC student says he wants to serve in the Army as long as he can, not only to protect the country, but also to honor all of those who are no longer with us. It's very critical for us to remember because if we don't, we dishonor those who we lost, and that's something that we can never do. We have to remember. We have to. Wheat organized the event that featured speakers like EKU's President Michael Benson and Richmond's mayor. The heroin epidemic in our region has skyrocketed over the past few weeks. It is so bad, one group is now demanding action from state leaders. The anti-heroin and opium group in Ohio is now calling on their state's governor to declare a medical state of emergency. The rally comes after a storm of overdoses in Cincinnati. The group wants Governor John Kasich to maximize resources to support law enforcement. They're also asking for more money for detox centers and sober living houses. The state is trying to find a new home for a historic Scott County Bridge. Our partners at the Herald Leader report the Transportation Cabinet says the Wiesenbaker Bridge, which is located near Midway, could be donated to someone pending approval by the Kentucky State Historic Preservation Office. If no one takes it, crews will demolish it as part of a replacement project that is scheduled to start next year. The state will pay to disassemble and move the bridge. You can expect to see crews back at Center Point in downtown Lexington this week. We spoke to developer Dudley Webb, who tells us the project is still on schedule despite some delays. He says a board needed to approve some changes to the project, which have been sent to contractors for pricing. He expects the garage to be complete next spring. We asked Webb what we can expect to see next. Here's what he had to say. Well, I think you're going to see probably they'll start on the eastern third of the block, and that'll come up to street level with the garage, and that'll build to the west. And the reason for that is the tower crane swing. Uh, one of the tower cranes has to do both the hotels as well as the office building. So we'll start with the office building first because it needs to be ready soonest. In July, Webb showed us updated designs for the above ground portion of the project. It included a 10 story office tower, an 18 story Marriott Hotel, a 12 story Marriott Residence Inn. Crews demolished and cleared the downtown block eight years ago. It's been a long time in coming, but, uh, you know, at least it sounds like some more progress uh, this week. 5.08 on WKYT this morning as we're just getting started with all the latest news here on your Monday. If you're in the market for a new house and you've got an eye for politics, maybe Donald Trump's childhood home is the perfect fit for you. We'll tell you the opening bid for the home in about 10 minutes. And one California TV station got a surprise guest on their tower camera. We'll have that story coming up <laughs> after Micah's forecast. Boy, have we seen that multiple times around here, too. Nice weather ahead the next few days. I really don't see any problems. It's later on in the work week. We start to see some storms move on in. I'll have that coming up next. Now, your zone-by-zone zone forecast with meteorologist Micah Harris. Yeah, it looks pretty good outside, and what we're going to be dealing with as we go through the day, a lot of sunshine, just like yesterday. It's going to look like yesterday. It'll feel a little bit warmer, but at least that humidity is still going to be relatively low, so we will take that all in all. I really don't see much of an issue there for today. Look, we're going to be in the 80s later on this afternoon, but dew points are going to be basically what you're seeing right now with temperatures there in the 50s, a couple of 60s sprinkled in here and there. For the most part, those dew points, when they're in the 50s, it will feel quite nice, and I promise you this, this is guaranteed. 83 degrees this afternoon is not the typical 83 that we've been experiencing the past few months. It's not like that. Humidity is way down, so you'll absolutely love the feel later on this afternoon. Off into the evening hours, we're looking pretty good right around 8 p.m. as it feels fantastic. It's one of those evenings, if you have an outdoor patio, it's a little fireplace, 
It's not a bad idea. 8, 9 p.m. actually feel quite nice to do that. We'll drop to the 70s pretty quickly and then 60s there just before midnight. So it's really not too bad of an idea. Temperatures and humidity will slowly be on the rise the next few days. We'll see the mid 80s there by Tuesday off into your Wednesday. Still at that time, I don't see a lot of moisture streaming on in, meaning if we do have that rain chance, which there is a rain chance during mid and late week, but there are small chances. You're talking 20, 30 percent on Wednesday. And that's it. Go off towards your Thursday. I really don't see a rain chance on Thursday. Friday, off into your weekend, is a little bit better opportunity is that humidity will slowly be on the rise. And that will give us the opportunity to a couple of rumbles of thunder. This setup, this seven day, if you date back toward last week, if you remember last week starting off Monday, it's just the same. I mean, it's virtually exactly the same. Where we're sitting there Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, really not much going on. Thursday, start to feel a little bit more moisture stream on in with those temperatures up. And then Friday, we start to see that small chance of rain slide in here. Remember, just like this past Friday, there's really not much going on during Friday night football, only a small chance during that time. It's off towards your weekend that we start to feel some of that rain slide on in. If you have any festivals, any events going on this coming weekend, I know there are a lot of 5Ks. Actually, I've got a 5K going on uh, here in Lexington on Saturday morning. As of right now, Saturday morning doesn't look all that wet. It's really Saturday afternoon and evening, just like we had this past weekend. This past weekend, we had a few storms there on Saturday, and they were a, a bit of an issue there as we traveled in towards your afternoon and evening hours. Most of your weekend stayed dry, though. It was really that two hour, maybe even three hour span for some of us that we picked up on some rain, but for the most part, it's a pretty nice weekend, except for those storms. Now, Sunday looked really good. And like mm -hmm. I said, we will piggyback on that, uh, off of that, uh, with that humidity, because humidity is way down. And that's the key. It looks pretty good. Well, it is good. And uh, <laughs> I managed to outrun those storms on Saturday. Did you? Too busy, I guess, going nice. to uh, hey, that's thing good. to thing. But it was there fun. Old fashioned days in Williamsburg, a Did lot have a of good fun. Time? Big crowd down there. Here it was, was really a hit. Good. Yeah, it really was. No <laughs> doubt. All right, the time is 5 14. You know, we uh, often see these. Creatures yes. on our tower cams, right? We really do. We <laughs> see some interesting things on top of the station from time to time. Uh, but from uh, gorgeous sunrises to sunsets, uh, maybe the occasional spider. Mm -hmm. uh, they get a little <laughs> too close for comfort sometimes. But here's one that is uh, pretty interesting. We want to show you from another station. This is so funny. KOVR all the way out in California had a special tower cam visitor as well. This little bird wanted its 15 seconds of fame, buddy, and it got it. Or maybe just a peek to figure out how TV works behind the scenes. Either way, it wasn't interested for too long before flying off again. Now, the funny thing, we, poor Micah, he's always calling for the birds and they won't come when he calls for them. But they always show up whenever he's not looking at it. But this yeah, one. We, we made fun when Micah was off last week when Jim Caldwell was on. They were all over all the place. They, just, they came in. So <laughs> <laughs> maybe it's that smooth voice of Jimmy's, you know, know. calls the birds, right? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's know. funny. 515 the time on WKYT this morning. Good to have you with us here on your Monday. When we return, we'll take a look at your money. Stay with us. If you think grabbing that airline seat booking has been getting harder, you may be right. And how you can feel right at home this presidential election season. I'm Karina Mitchell with those stories coming up in your CBS Money Watch Report. Kentucky mornings start here. You're watching WKYT this morning. And good morning. We're glad you're with us today here on WKYT as we're at 519 on your Monday. New numbers show that more people are traveling around the world. Plus, the billionaire owner of the Trump Taj Mahal Casino wants to shut it down. Karina Mitchell has the latest on your money. Investors are hoping Wall Street can recover from steep losses last week. On Friday, the Dow plunged 394 points, while the Nasdaq sank 133. A new report shows global air passenger traffic increased nearly 6.5% in 2015. That's the biggest gain since 2010. Atlanta Hartsfield Jackson was ranked the world's busiest airport with more than 100 million passengers passing through it last year, followed by Beijing, China. Chicago's O'Hare came in fourth. And Carl Icahn, the billionaire owner of the Trump Taj Mahal Casino, wants to shut it down. His team has filed a petition asking regulators to approve the casino's closure effective October 10th, but wants to start winding down some table games later this month. Icahn says the casino has lost millions a month while local casino workers strike against it. And Donald Trump's childhood home is going up for auction next month. 
Newsday reports the opening bid for the presidential nominee's first home in Queens, New York, will be $849,000. The owners of the 3,600-square-foot, five-bedroom theater say they want to see what it's worth. And that's your Money Watch. For more, log on to CBSMoneyWatch.com. In New York, I'm Karina Mitchell. Tesla's CEO says the company will update the autopilot software on its cars in two weeks tops. The company says the new software would have prevented a deadly crash in Florida four months ago. That's when a driver slammed into a tractor trailer that his autopilot did not identify. Tesla says the new system will rely more on radar instead of cameras. That's because traditional cameras may not work well in some lighting conditions. That's been some of the, the issues, mm -hmm. like they catch a reflection from a white vehicle, this right. sort of thing. So, uh, uh, we'll see. The Is this the self-driving car? Yeah, they keep okay. work, working on the technology. Yeah. They'll get there. You They'll know, get it, there. It's coming one of these days. 521 on WKYT on your Monday morning, and we have a lot more news coming right up for you. Sports is on the way next. Mark Stoops blames more than just his defense for the dismal performance down in Florida. And find out why Titans linebacker Avery Williamson wore personalized cleats despite the NFL's threat to find him. That's next in sports. Right now in Washington, Marion, and also Boyle counties, we're going at 52 degrees. That's a little chilly. You know, in some spots, we may even reach the upper 40s when it's all said and done. Look toward Harrodsburg, South Isa, uh, as we work our way back toward the west. We're seeing temperatures really chilly. We'll see if we'll finish off 48, 49 degrees, but all in all, we'll stay there in the 50s. It looks good, but it is slightly cool there for the kiddos heading off to the bus stop. Afternoon looks fantastic. We'll get into that forecast coming up first. Let's check out sports and see what's going on. There's nowhere to run and nowhere to hide. We're in the arena. That's what Mark Stoops had to say following Kentucky's disappointing 45 to 7 loss at Florida. The Wildcats avoided being shut out thanks to a fourth quarter touchdown, but the game was dominated by the Gators on all sides of the ball. Prior to UK's late touchdown, the Kentucky defense had given up 79 straight points dating back to the Southern Miss game. But Stoops didn't want to put all the blame on his defense. You know, it's always team football. You know, we've got to we got to possess the football. We got to get first downs. We got to move the chains, and we got to get off the field and on third downs defensively. And uh, yeah, we're not playing very good defense at all. And uh, um, you know, we've got to get a lot better. We've got to get stronger up front. Um, you know, in the back end, we're, we, you know, we thought we were going to have some guys that could cover some people, and we're not playing very good there today as well. The Wildcats will have an opportunity to get back on track Saturday when they host the Aggies of New Mexico State. It's a 4 p.m. kickoff on the SEC alternate channel. Titans linebacker and former Kentucky Wildcat Avery Williamson had plans to honor the victims of 9-11 by wearing special patriotic cleats during the Titans season opener on Sunday. His plan was to auction off the cleats after the game with the proceeds going to Operation Warrior Wishes. Williamson's plans, however, changed when the NFL threatened to fine Avery for a uniform violation if he wore the cleats that didn't match the rest of his team. But guess what? Well, Avery decided he'd wear those cleats anyway on Sunday after several New York and New Jersey law enforcement associations reached out to Avery to let him know that they would be willing to pay whatever fine the NFL imposed. After the game, Avery explained his decision to go against the NFL's wishes. I just felt like it was, um, I got so much support across the country, and especially when, when the, uh, the New York and New Jersey police, police unions said that they would pay my fine. That really meant a lot, so I felt like if I didn't wear them, it would, it would be just, I don't know, I just, I, I just wouldn't have felt good about it. So I felt like I had to, had to do that, you know, just for myself and to represent the people that were lost and the people that, um, you know, do their jobs every day to protect us. So I feel like it was just a duty to myself. Good for Avery standing up for what he believes in. That'll do it for your morning sports. Have a great Monday.